Hello and welcome to episode 92 of Ready to Mosh. I'm Kev P and alongside me as always, it's the last to my festival, it's Gem G. Well yeah, I guess. It's the last one of the year. As far as we know. As Well, as far as we know so far. Only three months left yet. Yeah. And this episode, it's a look ahead to Dolby Altfest, which is four weeks away. It is, yeah. It's the 18th of September as this episode goes out and the event starts on the 18th of October. And it's at the Hairy Dog in Derby, which I'm quite excited about because it's a venue we've not been to. No, all exciting. I don't know how we've not been there. No, it kind of blows my mind a little that we've not been there. I suppose the thing is from where we are, it's probably easier to get towards Nottingham than Derby. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I was born in Derby, grew up in Derbyshire, and I've only ever been to one gig in Derby. Oh, that says it all. And that was in 2002. Yeah. So it's been a while. <laughs> But yeah, looking forward to exploring a new venue. We obviously can't tell you a lot about the venue having not been there, but there is on the Hairy Dog website, they've got a really little cool walkthrough so you can kind of have a look around. Yeah, just get a, yeah, get a feel for the place. Which I really love and I think all venues should do that so that you don't get nervous about going somewhere new because I can see where the toilets are even though I've never been. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. All the important things, I know where the bar is, I know where the toilets are and I've seen the stage. Yeah. What else do you need? Well, I'll tell you what you do need. You need tickets to get in. That is true. And as we speak, tickets are still available. Yeah. And you know what? The price of this festival is an absolute bargain. I think this is the best value that I've seen all year. Yeah, I think the yeah band to price ratio. Absolutely. So we'll run through the pricing very quickly. So you can buy individual day tickets or you can buy a full five day entry. Yeah. And the individual days vary because there's a different number of bands each day, isn't there? Yeah, correct. And they vary from five fifty to twenty seven fifty. And you can get a full five day entry for forty four. Including fees. Including fees, yeah, which it's an absolute bargain because I think there's around forty bands. I think so. I think it works out around just over a pound. Just a over band. a pound a band. <laughs> like how can you not you know, how can you not think that's not great value? Yeah, and I think as far as we know, there's only one stage, so it's kind of consecutive bands, so you could see every band. Yeah, very feasible. To. One of the other things that blows my mind, it's the seventh incarnation of this. Which again, how have we never been? How have we never been? How have we missed it? And it's the first one over five days. Yeah, I think, and is it one extra day they've added on this year? I yeah, I think so. I think it used to be four days, and now it's uh, gone out to five. So speaking of which, we will start with the Wednesday, which is a new day for this year. Um, what we're going to do for the whole preview is we're just going to run through every band that's playing in terms of mentioning who they are, so you get the full line-up. And then we're just going to talk a little bit more in detail about bands that we're particularly looking forward to seeing at the moment, because we've not fully had a chance to listen to everybody yet there's some bands i need to listen to a bit more to decide my thoughts on them but we've got a good idea of a lot that we want to see so wednesday then is the chosen by you evening so a lot of bands applied for this and then it was chosen by you the people who are going to it so people got to vote for it and five bands came out as winning and they are karma's puppet drip fed empire recall the remains regicide and seventh sea then Thursday night, you've got Reanimate, Only the Righteous, Daybreaker, Internal Conflict, Water Lines, and the headliner that night is Defences. And then on Friday, you've got Portrayal of Ruin, Soraya, Torn Between, Starved, Those Once Loyal, Harbinger, and Bound in Fear. Moving on to Saturday, there is Eviscerize, Mexican Painkiller, Wargrave, Must Kill, Hellgrind, Reaper UK, Inhuman Nature, Imperium, Devastator, Divine Chaos, Hell Ripper, and Gamma Bomb as the headliner. And then final day, Sunday, you've got Parallel States, Vardy Band, No Setting Sun, Kemi Queen, Thundarian Summer, I hope I've said that right, Slandy UK, Medusa Touch, The Dead Amigos, Luna Kiss, Leader of Down, and These Wicked Rivers are the headliners. Right, now we're going to go back through each day, and we're not going to go through every single band, but we are going to talk about a few of the bands we're looking forward to seeing. So, starting proceedings on Wednesday is Karma's Puppet, who are a five-piece from Macclesfield. They've got a lot of kind of big-hitting riffs, really melodic choruses, and uh, some groove in there as well. So, you should be really good live. Yeah, I'm a fan of them as well. I've only recently started listening to them, but in particular the track Rot, I'm really liking that one. Mm -hmm. 
And then next up, we've got Drip Fed Empire. We've uh, seen them before, and we were hoping to watch them at Metal to the Masses, which we've talked about a lot, but that never happened. And they're former guests of the show. Yeah, they were on episode 75. Yep, that was the one. We had a chat with them then, so if you've not listened to that, go and have a listen. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to seeing them again. Yeah, it's it feels like it's been an age since we've seen them, so... I'm really excited to see the guys. Then next up, we've got Recall the Remains, who we've caught a bit of before. I'm really excited to see. Yeah, we just saw the end of them at Uprising this year, so looking forward to seeing the full set from them this time. They had a new single out in May called Life Taker. It's really good. And there's also a great track called The Night Will Bleed. Yeah, I really love that one and the new single as well. Yeah, absolutely yeah. cracking tracks. And they're kind of like a metalcore, deathcore sort of band. Yeah, the really good combination of the two. I love how it works together. Yeah, really, really mm. good. And then next up on Wednesday is Regicide. These are kind of a thrash groove kind of mix of sound. Reminded me a little bit of Creator. Yeah. That kind of vibe. So, yeah, I'm really liking them, particularly the latest single, Dying to Be Liked. It's a good song and some interesting social commentary in that one as well. And the headline of Wednesday night is Seventh C. And they're five-piece metalcore from Knots. They've got a lot of atmosphere and a lot of their tracks really built it up. And they play quite a lot of festivals as well. So they will be really worth checking out. Yep, looking forward to them too. And everyone on Wednesday. And it's a good kind of mix of different sounds going on on Wednesday as well. So yeah, I think it'll it be a good yeah. kind of opening night, setting the scene. So moving on to Thursday, and we're starting with another great metal band. They're from Sheffield, it's four-piece, and it is Reanimate. So they've not been around that long, but they've got such a great sound. I'm really looking forward to seeing them. The new EP came out this year called Into the Void. And there's a couple of great tracks on there like Blind and Snake. Really worth checking out. Our next band then is Daybreaker, who were at Bloodstock this year on the Jaeger stage, but we didn't manage to see them, unfortunately. But I've heard very good things about the performance, and I think they even had a Macarena pick going on at one oh. point. So whether that will happen again, I don't know. I didn't hear about that. You not? No. Yeah. And they've also just done a few dates with Seed and Akira. That's a great which, support. Yeah, spot. there was them. I think Collapse the Sky were there as well, so that was an awesome lineup. And that's hopefully put them in good stead for a warm-up for this one. Oh, yeah, and they've got a great single out that's called Realise. Yeah. Really like that one, so go give that a listen. And another band we're really looking forward to seeing again is Internal Conflict, who are, again, former guest interviews. Yeah, we chatted to them ahead of Uprising, where we saw them. We did, yeah, so we spoke with Adam, and they are really, really good live. They're one of my, my favourites, I think. Yeah, mine too. And, yeah, that's actually episode 58. Oh, well done. I had no idea where that was. Ah, pace to do your research. So, yeah, go give that a listen and definitely give Internal Conflict a listen. And then Waterlines, another band who were on the Jaeger stage at Bloodstock this year that we really wanted to see, but unfortunately we didn't get a chance to. Heard really good things about their live shows, so really looking forward to finally seeing them this time. Yeah, me too. Uh, they've got a EP out this year that was called Anti-Human. Yeah. I really like that. Particularly, is it Love Prey? That's yeah. one of my favourites of it. Really liking that one. Really good EP. Yeah. That. Can't wait to see that live. And um, next up is the headline band Defences, who have got, you know, like a couple of full length albums released, two, a couple of EPs released, multiple singles. They've done loads of UK tours and sell out headline shows. And they've played places like Download, Take Down, Burn It Down, UK Tech Metal Festival. So they are going to be a real great finish to the night and it's going to be good to see them live. Yep, looking forward to that one as well. Moving on to Friday then, and as the days go on, the band lists get longer. So first band I'm really looking forward to on Friday is Soraya. These are a band I've come across recently, actually through Rockfit, randomly, which had a, there was a New Blood special. I forgot to mention actually, Waterlines also have a track of the New Blood special for Rockfit too, but I was already aware of them anyway. Yeah, Soraya are really cool. They've got quite a kind of groove metal sound going on with them. So yeah, really interesting sound and I think it'll be awesome to see that live. Um, quite similar in sound, I think like Heart of a Coward, those yeah. kind of vibes. So, and they were awesome live when we saw them. So good things can be expected there. Exactly. Then. Yeah. Then moving on to a band that I am absolutely determined to see. Those ones loyal. So we've missed them twice already through no fault of our own, I don't think. 
No, I think Mangata last year, we had to go and check in our hotel. Yep. And Bloodstock this year, we were doing interviews. Yeah, and they were one band I'm so gutted I've still not got around to watching yet. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing them. So no matter what what happens, I'm going to be there for that. Their EP Relentless Cycle came out this year, and it's absolutely amazing. And there's also some really great tracks that are a little bit older. Things like Between the Lines and Carry You, in particular, one of my absolute favourites. So I hope I get to see that live. And next is a band that we've already seen this year, Harbinger. We saw them at Mangata in July and they absolutely blew the Red Room apart at Rescue Rooms and my ears have just about recovered from it. It was just an onslaught of noise from start to finish. Yeah, it was a cacophony of volume, wasn't it? It's was absolutely amazing. They've got some great kind of guitar solo stuff that goes on. Just incredible riffs. If you're not already familiar with Harbinger, they are kind of a deathcore tech metal kind of sound. They had a couple of EPs out last year, A Letter to Anguish and Prayer of Deliverance. Both of those are awesome and definitely worth checking out if you haven't done yet. And then your Friday night headliner is Bound in Fear, who are really, really fucking heavy. I'm not going to blow your tits off. They are going to be so good live and they're going to be an absolute treat to watch. And I'm sure that when they're smashing everything out, the whole place is going to go crazy. Yeah, I think them following up from Harbinger as well, it's just going to be absolute noise fest, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. It's, it's an absolutely great lineup to this. And yeah, can't think of uh, a better way to spend a Friday night. No, not at all. Also, I just want to say they've got some incredible merch. So hopefully uh, see if we can pick something up along those lines as well. Yeah, to be honest, there's quite a few bands that we've been talking about already that have got some really cool artwork and some cool merch that I've spotted. Yeah, so that's definitely going to be us coming on with countless T-shirts then, isn't it? Probably. And then next up, we have got Thrash Saturday. And to be honest, I'm pretty much looking forward to seeing every band on this one. Yeah, I'm the same. So it's just kind of a case of just picking a few out, isn't it? Yeah, we've just selected a few to talk a bit more about. And the first one I want to talk about is Mexican Painkiller, who I wasn't familiar with before Derby Alt Fest, but I'm really enjoying their sound. Same, I hadn't come across them at all before, and yeah, they're just different. Yeah, four-piece from Manchester, and such an amazing sound. And it's kind of strange that we'd not come across them before. Yeah, because they've got about three albums out, haven't they? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. I really don't understand how we've never seen them. Yeah, because on paper they are just everything we love in a band. Yeah, so their third album, Coyote, came out in 2021. And like you say, on paper, we should have we should have easily seen these by now. So these are going to be absolutely great live and really looking forward to seeing them. And then Wargrave, I'm really looking forward to seeing. They're a relatively new band, but I seem to have seen them popped up on quite a few lineup posters kind of over the last few months or so. They've only got a couple of tracks released on streaming sites, Discovering My Truth is the latest single, and then System is the other one. From what I've heard from those two tracks, they have got a bit more of a kind of a, a melodic side to the thrash. But yeah, they're really cool. I'm looking forward to hearing some more stuff live, as well as those two, which I'm sure they'll be playing. Then I've got down a real heavy thrash metal band, and it's Imperium, who won Metal to the Masses in London in 2022, and then went on to play at Bloodstock. I keep thinking I've seen them, but I'm not not one hundred percent sure. No, I'm the same. I know that we did have them as one of our ready to mosh recommendations back in February. Yeah, but yeah, I don't think we have actually seen them live as of yet. And their latest single, Iron Thunder, came out this year. And I think it came out in June. That is really, really good. I've done it. And that is definitely worth listening to. Very, very heavy. It's going to go down in a storm, I'm sure. Yeah, looking forward to that. And Here Comes the Night, I think, is my favourite Imperium track, so hoping that they're going to be playing that one. And then we've got Devastator, who we are big fans of. Absolutely. We've seen them twice already at Mangata last year, and then we also saw them at Bloodstock last year as well on the New Blood stage. So there are four piece from Derbyshire, Blackened Thrash Band, for me, they're a bit like if Behemoth and Slayer had a baby. Yeah, that's which a sounds, great description. It's an absolute perfect mix for me. Their debut album was out in 2020, baptised in Blasphemy. And they have been very recently working on their second album, so hopefully we'll get to hear some newer stuff from that as well. Yeah, and they're also a former recommendation. Of course they are, yeah. 
Yeah, so it, and it's good to see kind of bands like Devastator moving up bills. And another band with some really cool merch. Then next up is Hellripper, who I am so intrigued about. Same. I've actually put on my little note next to them, curious. Yeah. So it's a one-man band from Scotland, but the sound, obviously, you know, either it's all done as individual, it's probably all done as individual parts and then put together, but the sound is incredible. It's so, so good. And what I'm intrigued to see is, obviously because it's one person, how that conveys and carries out live. Exactly. That's what I meant when I said I was curious. Like, how, yeah. how is this done live? Yeah, so I I imagined that Hell Ripper have, you know, maybe other people that they play live with just to kind of do that. But, yeah, I'm so excited about this one. Kind of like, it's, mm. it's almost like a nervous energy about it. Yeah, definitely. Because like with most bands, even though if you've never seen them live, you you roughly know what you're going to get, don't you, from the live shows. But this one is, yeah, what will it be like? Yeah, exactly. Um, the latest release is, I think it's a great title, Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags. Sounds amazing. So it just sounds so good, does it? And yeah, really, really excited about this. So let's hope that carries out live. And then the headliners of Thrash Saturday are Irish Thrash Legends, Gamma Bomb. Another band, I don't know how we've not seen them before because they've been around for about 20 years. I think they've got about seven albums and somehow we just haven't seen them live. You reading my notes because I've pretty much got exactly the same thing. (laughs) No, I'm reading my own. I won't be able to read your writing. Yeah, I mean, and they've played some of the biggest festivals in Europe. Yeah, they've uh, they've played in Finland, they've played Hellfest in France, and they've released a new single this month called Speed Funeral, which is, well, what the title says, to be honest, it, it really goes for it. Yeah, and then they've got their new album coming out in November, I believe, called Bats. Yeah, which will be a uh, nice sound to your ears, you love Bats, so... I absolutely love Bats, yeah. And they definitely get the prize for, obviously, best song titles of the weekend, I would imagine. So if anyone else can beat Mussolini Mosh, you know, let me know. That is a great title. There's also classics such as She's Not My Mother Todd, James Joint and Skellington Crew, to name but a few. Finally, we've got Sunday's bands. And first up, there's a band very local to us from Knots called Parallel States, who I am very excited about watching. A uh, pop punk band had a single out in May called Self-Medicated. A little bit kind of, I suppose, Green Day sort of vibes to them. I've really enjoyed listening to everything that I've heard so far. So excited to see this live as well. Should be really good. Yeah, I think they'll be good live. When I first listened to them, I wasn't really feeling it, but I think that's just because I'm not really listening to a lot of punk at the moment. Yeah. So it didn't really gel with me at that point, but I'm sure I'll love it live. Because, you know, I do like kind of, like you say, early Green Day. That's what it reminded me of, I think. So just before we mention the next band, actually, just in terms of the sound of Sunday, I think, or the days of the festival, I guess, because Wednesday, like we said, was quite a mixed bag. I think Thursday, Friday are kind of mainly metalcore focused, I would say. Obviously, we had Thrash Saturday, and then Sunday is quite a mixed bag throughout the day. Yeah, a little bit of a lighter feel, I think, on uh, Sunday. Yeah, so after you just mentioned Parallel States that are quite punky, I'm just going to mention No Setting Sun, who are quite just a kind of classic modern hard rock sound to them. They remind me a bit of Alter Bridge. Yeah, I thought the same thing. A little bit grungy, kind of reminded me of Soundgarden as well. Yeah, there's hints of that in there, I think. So there are four piece from Derby, like all the best things are, and they released their debut EP last year from The Earth, which has six tracks on it, and they're all really good. So again, I think that'll be great to see live. Then moving on to Thundarian Summer, who are a five-piece grunge kind of grunge rock band, almost meeting like a indie sound with kind of like hints of therapy, that kind of feel to it. And I really like these. Been listening to it, listening to them a lot. And their album State of Mind came out in December last year. Yeah, my note on them was Bop Rock. Bop I think rock. it's a good kind of yeah, like you say. Was it therapy? You yeah, said? I, yeah, therapy. yeah, it reminded me of therapy. Yeah, just good old rock that you can have a bop to. And then another change of sound again, we've got Medusa Touch, and these are quite a classic 80s metal sound. So they reminded me a little bit of some kind of early ACDC. There were some hints of Wasp in there for me. Just kind of good old school, riffy, you know, fist punching kind of tunage. They've released two albums so far. The most recent was last year's Insanitize. 
And yeah, I think they'll be just really good for kind of the middle of Sunday afternoon, just to get everybody really kind of energised and up for the rest of Sunday evening. Then moving on to Lunar Kiss, who are a four piece from Coventry. And they've actually got a track called In the House in a Heartbeat, which I swear blind is the music from 28 Days Later. Yes, it very much sounds like it. Yeah, so they're kind of like an alt rock sort of indie sound. And their EP, Lust for Blood, has got a great track on it called Something Beautiful, which is definitely worth checking out. And then the final band that we are going to talk about is the final band of Sunday and the final band of the weekend, another band from Derby on the Bill, These Wicked Rivers, who we have been big fans of since we saw them at Stone Dead last year where they won the opening poll. Yeah, huge, huge fans of these and really, really looking forward to seeing them again. They were so good last year. And I wonder, I'm wondering, kind of like, are they going to bring their whole stage show again? Yeah, I was wondering that too, because one of the things we loved about them, as well as the sound, was kind of the whole setup with their rugs and their lamps. I'm sure, did they not kind of auction or sell off the lamps when they were doing their crowdfunding for the second album? Yeah, they did. And I don't know whether they've whether they're doing anything different in that kind of respect. Uh, obviously, you just said about the new album and the crowdfunding for that. So it'd be really cool to see kind of like what their stage show is this time as well. Yeah, and it'd be weird as well, because obviously when we saw them at Stone Dead, it was outdoor show on a big stage in bright sunshine. And obviously it's going to be a very small venue, small stage. So it's going to be very... Very intimate. Intimate, yeah, that was the word. <laughs> yeah, and it was... I mean, it was, what, 4,000 people at Stone Dead last year? I think four or five. Yeah. So, And then, obviously, this venue, I mean, it's a great size venue, but obviously it's not a big outdoor festival. It's going to be so interesting to see kind of like how that sounds and how I suppose how loud they're going to sound as well. Yeah, I mean, if we've got any years left after the previous five days. Well, yeah. But, yeah, really looking forward to it, hearing some of the old classics that they've got and some of the newer stuff. Hopefully that we'll get to hear as well. Yeah, the like the single "Testify," absolutely love listening to that. It's one of my favourites. It's kind of like, it's a real big hit of that one. Yeah, "Shine On" is my favourite. I think that was really good live last year. So I'm hoping they're going to do that one again. And "Lonely Road." Wonder mm. if they'll play that. Yeah, like a little acoustic. Yeah, dishy. just a little acoustic kind mm. of performance. And yeah, they were one of the highlights at Standard last year. And I know they're going to attract a lot more fans this year as well. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of shows, haven't they, since Stone Dead, and they're getting really popular. Yeah, the presence is just growing all mm. the time. So in addition to all of this, on Thursday night, there's Rock Karaoke as an after party. I think we'll definitely be up for that. What's your song going to be? Well, it would have been at one time, Nancy Boy, by Placebo, but my voice, as I've got older, has got a lot deeper, so I'd probably have to go for something like... Barry White. Soundgarden or <laughs> something like Soundgarden or Pearl Jam, maybe. I think, yeah. I think you should do a Pearl Jam. A Pearl Jam one. Mm. What about you? Oh, no. You've heard me singing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Would you want me to inflict that on anyone but you? Well, I'm going to say you have the voice of an angel. <laughs> we'll leave that angel there. Angel of death, maybe. Rudeness. Never know anything like it. Right, anyway, Friday also has an after party, and this is just with Chris EP in the main bar until 3am. And that goes off again on Saturday till 3... Did you say 3pm or 3am? I think I said 3am. Okay, I wasn't sure. But yeah, that's on till 3am as well. So there are going to be some long, long days, long, long nights coming up soon. Will we make it to any of the after parties? We always have these good intentions, don't we? Yeah, they never quite go that way when we've got form for being really tired. Yeah, I think if it's going to be any night, I think it'll be Friday because it's, having said, I was going to say it's been a shorter day of bands, but we will have been at the day job work in the daytime, won't we? Yeah, but we're both working remote that day, I think. Yeah. So we might be okay. I just feel like Saturday we're more likely to drink and therefore just go to sleep straight mm. after <laughs> like we'd normally call, crawl back to our tent we'll just crawl back to our lodgings so that's a bit of a summary kind of a guide to who's playing and more importantly some of the bands we're really looking forward to seeing i think to be honest we'll try and watch as many as we can anyway so even though we've not gone into more detail on on the preview doesn't mean we're not going to watch them 
they're just the ones that kind of have stood out most while we've been listening around to all of the bands that we'll be playing. And hopefully between now and the festival, we might have some uh, very special treats with uh, some of the bands lined up for interviews. Yeah, so keep an eye out on our socials for those and obviously an ear out on the podcast places. So yeah, that's just our general preview of the whole event, which just to reiterate, it's starting on the 18th of October, all the way through five days until the 22nd of October at the Hairy Dog in Derby. And like we said at the start, as we speak, tickets are still available. So make sure you go and get some. And obviously, if you are going to the event and you see us there, come and say hello. And as always, we may give you a sticker or more likely we may forget. So that's the end of this episode. So thank you as always for listening. As I mentioned, the socials just before, if you don't know where these are already, we're on Instagram, Twitter, or X if you will, and threads at Ready to Mush Cast, and Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube at Ready to Mush. So go give us a like, a follow, or whatever the term is over on all of those. And do give us a five-star review, some kind words, and all of that on wherever you prefer to cast your pods. And we'll be back at some point in the future with another episode. Make it stop, Moog.